Spokane, located in the far eastern edge of Washington State, is named after the American Indian tribe, meaning Children of the Sun. Founded in 1871, Spokane is the home of Spokane Falls that run through the center of the city. Spokane is where you'll also find 53-year-old mother of two, Cindy Coville. 20 years ago, Cindy, a registered nurse, was living a normal, happy life. She had just given birth to her second child when she started experiencing an uncontrollable sensation in her neck. I just noticed a, kind of a weird sensation or feeling that I needed to move my head like in a certain way. And it just, every once in a while, it would just hit me and that went on for several months. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And finally, um, it got to the point where I couldn't control the position of my head because the muscles in my neck would um, spasm and it would pull my head in awkward, weird positions. What Cindy was experiencing was the beginning of a condition known as cervical dystonia. Dr. David Greeley is a neurologist specializing in neurodegenerative diseases at Northwest Neurological in Spokane, Washington. He says that cervical dystonia is a condition under the umbrella of dystonia movement disorders. Dystonia is a, uh, in, a in a broad category, a movement disorder. And a movement disorder is basically a, uh, a problem that involves um, muscle that moves involuntarily, so the patient uh, ends up with uh, involuntary postures or tremors or tics. Dystonia disrupts the nervous system's ability to allow the brain and the muscles to communicate properly. In cervical dystonia, this miscommunication takes place in and around neck muscles. So cervical dystonia is one type of dystonia. And so dystonia can affect any muscle in the body that is what's called a striated muscle, the muscle most of us think of, everything but the heart and the intestines. And cervical dystonia, this refers to the neck, the neck region. And so anyone who has cervical dystonia has involuntary movements, postures, or turning involving the head and neck. As Cindy's condition gradually became worse, so did her pain. The pain got fairly intolerable and just the weird positioning of my head made it hard to do anything. So they may have an involuntary pull or, or pain in their neck, uh, but it will progress and can progress to be disabling to where people have involuntary head movements that they can't adjust to or um, can't work around. So it usually will progress in, in its intensity. 32-year-old South Florida resident Barbie also has cervical dystonia. Barbie was a 25-year-old teacher when one day in class she started to feel a strange pull in her neck. I was teaching my high school students and I noticed that my my head, uh, basically that's the best way I can describe it, my head was just turning on its own, it felt, on its own to the left and I couldn't control, I couldn't tell my brain to bring my head back to its normal position. Although Barbie's condition started when she was in her mid-twenties, experts say that signs and symptoms of cervical dystonia are more commonly seen in those over 40. Dr. Bruce Rubin is a neurologist at Design Neuroscience Center in Doral, Florida, with specialty training in neurorehabilitation, which is a complex medical process to aid in recovery from a nervous system injury. Dr. Rubin is also an adjunct professor at the University of Miami Department of Neurology. Cervical dystonia is more common uh, to occur in middle ages, around the age of 40 or so. It, it has a higher prevalence in females than uh, males, probably about one and a half or two to one, maybe even higher. It's not a very common disorder, maybe 10 to 30 people out of 100,000 do you see primary cervical dystonia. Although it can occur to anyone at any age, it is rare and often those with cervical dystonia are misdiagnosed. Uh, cervical dystonia is confusing because it looks like so many other things and it's not uncommon that people go seven years and have seen seven to ten physicians before they get the right diagnosis because it, it commonly looks like something else. So all of us have had neck pain, all of us have had a muscle spasm in one's place and so we write it off or 
doctors will say, well, that's you just slept wrong, or uh, they may think it's an orthopedic injury, or they may think it's a rheumatologic concern, and, and treat it completely differently than, than as a neurologist would treat it. Both Cindy and Barbie were misdiagnosed when they went to their primary care physicians. I went to my primary physician. Um, he ordered an x-ray and a CT and the average normal things you would think he would do. Um, I also saw a chiropractor and at some point I started having therapy like with a physical therapist and an occupational therapist. Um, nobody really knew what was going on. They tried, you know, muscle relaxants and different medications. There are no medical tests that can prove the diagnosis of cervical dystonia. But blood tests and MRI scans of the head are often used to help rule out other things. So doctors have a twofold problem when it comes to cervical dystonia. There's no known cause, and it's very hard to diagnose. We don't know what causes it. We don't have a good way to test for it, say in an MRI or a, uh, a blood test. Uh, typically, blood tests and MRIs are going to be normal. There is likely a number of things going on. We already know that there's sensory involvement, and so this may be a sensory integration problem as well. It's really hard to know. Like I said, if you look at a brain MRI, it's normal. When you examine these people outside of the area where there's dystonia, they're pretty much neurologically normal. It's suspected maybe 20 or 30 percent of cases that are post-traumatic or after trauma. Uh, where it starts happening. And that may be more in somebody who gets a dystonia of their arm and they've done repetitive work, like a typist or someone who plays the flute or piano repeatedly in exactly the same way to the point of almost burdening the, the brain. So it might be that if you burn out that circuit board or the wiring gets overwhelmed, but no one knows exactly what causes it. For Barbie, her cervical dystonia progressed so quickly, she was soon unable to do even the simplest daily activities all by herself. I couldn't do everything on my own anymore because anything that required coordination, like holding up a spoon or even lathering the soap and trying to, to wash your forearms or your biceps in the, in the shower, like this, this kind of... Um, was almost impossible because of the pulling and tugging in that shoulder and neck area. Like you try to do one thing like this and then your, your neck or your shoulders were kind of going in the opposite direction so you couldn't do things that require coordination. Um, it, was, it was bad. <laughs> it was very, very painful, um, physically, emotionally. After seeing several doctors with no relief, both Cindy and Barbie decided to see movement disorder specialists. Since the condition cannot be seen in blood tests or imaging scans, doctors diagnose cervical dystonia based on a thorough clinical evaluation. The other telltale sign in making the diagnosis of cervical dystonia is usually a sensory trick. Uh, and so I, I may ask the patient, do you, do you touch your head or your face to help your head feel centered or your head from turning? Um, but more often than not, you can see them when they walk in there. They may be touching the chin or the ear or the back of the head. And, and so uh, just by sitting there, they're sitting there like this, and you, you're wondering <laughs> what they're doing. Having a thorough clinical evaluation early on and getting the proper diagnosis can help in addressing the progression of cervical dystonia. It tends to worsen within the first year or two, whether they're treated or not. So if we see somebody seven years into their symptom onset or 15 years, it's usually not much different than if we had seen them two years into it. And so it tends to get bad quickly and then hold. It only gets, it only gets so bad, you can only turn your head so far. So we might see somebody at their maximum turning, and so we can improve that and again give them more freedom of motion, um, but again, we'll never get them back to perfectly baseline. There is no cure for cervical dystonia but doctors have been able to return their patients to a better quality of life. For Cindy, her condition was diagnosed years after her initial symptoms began. Even with therapy, Cindy still lives with the effects of her cervical dystonia. I have a lot of muscles affected, so I still have some spasming, but it's not as bad. And the pain goes away at least for a few weeks, which is a great relief. Barbie also receives injectable therapy and has done some physical therapy to help with her mobility and flexibility of neck and back muscles. 
it's not uncommon for patients to be misdiagnosed, uh, be told that it's in their, it's in their head, uh, you know, that they're crazy or something like that. So if you're having, you know, an abnormal head position and you're really not getting where you want to go, I'd say, you know, you, you should be seen by a neurologist. This is really a neurological condition. For most neurologists can diagnose it just by looking at it.